You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey you guys and gals, Nery here from Drake Queen Gaming. It's sending me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon, today and coming back at another Let's Play episode of Shelter. So y'all, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel, get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you were up and let's go. Alright. <clears throat> can't see anything, but I know there's a place like the back of my hand. This has been our home for years. Even if I need to get there with my eyes closed, I will. With every second we waste here, someone can die because of my... Suddenly I'm stopped in my tracks with a slam against a hard wall. A wall? Here? No, it's the metal gate. We usually keep this area closed because of the exterior damage in the baths. But I was sure that we left it open once we entered today. Did Max and Brim close it after coming in? It's okay. It's okay. Even if it's closed, I can still jar it open manually, as long as it's not... Locked. Fuck! This is terrible! I can't open it if it was locked by shelter system. There are those long, heavy bolts and, like, other things. They kind of come in and... and... What do I do? What do I do? Forgive me, I locked it after Teak left. It's okay, Luke. It's okay, Luke. Uh, sit down and leave it to us. You're clearly... Stop talking. Please just stop. I don't want to listen to any of those voices right now. I just want to get out of here and fix everything. I don't want to be in the same room with them. I pushed myself away from the gate and fumbled back towards the faint moonlight of our bathroom. I hit someone on my way and I almost fall, but I only start running faster. Away from those voices I don't want to listen to. Away from those eyes I don't want to look back at. We can't get out through the gate. There's only the way we can leave... There's only one way we can leave this place, then. The massive hole in the ceiling. I jump over the rubble and try to climb over the wall, using the cracks for leverage. I want to call out to the dogs, but I stop myself. They will figure out how to, they will figure out to follow the same route regardless. The most important thing right now is for me to reach the control tower as soon as possible. I barely manage to reach the ledge with my fingers. The cold wind jabs at them painfully, but I know it's only because I stayed in the hot water for so long. With all my effort, I pull myself up, high enough to hook my elbow over the ledge, and expose my bare face to the assault of cold as well. It hurts. It hurts. It doesn't matter. This is nothing compared to how cold my own mind is making me feel right now. Even colder when I see a few blurred shade shades flying across the sky in the distance. The flying monsters will get here much sooner than the landbound ones. I'll be an easy target for them if I go out now. But that doesn't matter. As long as I can get to the control room faster, I don't care what kind of path I need to take. I will. I will. Luke! The dog grabs me by the ankle. He doesn't let go of me. He pulls me down. He's stronger than me. Let go! No, I will not! What for, what for goodness sake do you think you're doing? What do you think? I'm getting out of here. I have to get to the control tower. Not through there. It's too dangerous. Too steep. Too cold. You know. Like, the cold is a problem for you. You're a dog. You can take it. But you cannot. You're still wet. Your body is not fit for extreme conditions like that. I'm not cut out for a lot of things you guys can do with ease, but I can't just sit here and do nothing. Follow me or let me go. Get out of my way. Barry's expression doesn't change. However, I feel heavy tension in his paws. It's more concerning than if he talked back or snarled at me. A sudden pull down on my leg takes me by surprise and I completely slip off the ledge. One of my hands splashes against the surface of the water, but the rest of my body doesn't follow. I get suspended midair and get tossed to the side. Barry holds me under one of his armpits like a child, moving away from the hole in the ceiling and the rubble and, and the rubble in the water. Hey! I hit his belly and thighs with the sides of my fists, calling out to him to let go of me. He pretends he doesn't even notice. He's completely ignoring me. Damn it, it's so frustrating to be this powerless. I hate it. I hate it so much. Suddenly he catches both of my wrists with his other hand with a quick swoop. I curse and glare at him. He places me down to the floor by one of the walls. Then he sits at the edge of the bath with the water behind him. The starry sky illuminates both of us. You know we need to get out of here. Yes, we do. Rune and Max are working on that. Fine, you win. Let's go back to get let's go back to them and that is not gonna be necessary. They shall figure it out on their own and let us know. I've trust in them. Are you joking? What are we going to do then? We Luke We are going to talk. My heart instantly sinks and I become aware of the ice bath of stress my mind has been submerged in all this time. I can't bring myself to mask it with forced anger anymore. I can't look at Burry. But even when I avoid his gaze, I still hear the commotion outside. 
everything because of my incompetence. Why couldn't I just do everything like I always did? It was a little lonely, true, but that's just how life is sometimes. Everything happening right now is because I tried to rebel against my role. Now hundreds of dogs are in danger, and I have, and I have damaged my closest friendships. I don't believe I can mend everything I destroyed today. All of the worst-case scenarios I've been scared of for months and years are coming true right now. Everything is crashing down. Talk to me, Luke. I did. I already told them everything. All the things I should have just kept unspoken. That's the problem. Why couldn't I keep my mouth shut? If only I could turn back time. Hurry, please. Forget everything I said earlier. I didn't mean any of that. I dare a careful glance at him. I see his eyebrows furrow as he stares me down. He rarely gives me a look like that. He lacks his usual St. Bernard warmth. No, it's more akin to the face of an investigator interrogating a suspect. He's serious. Is he angry at me? He has to be. But why is he so quiet? Is he... Oh no! Is he reading me with canine empathy right now? Dogs can naturally feel and understand the emotions of other people. Burry has actually been trained in using that power for gathering intel for people unwilling or unable to speak. So you know, water time. All right, y'all, and we are back. Okay. Just like it can use monovision to stare into the spirit composition of a person, the dogs can stare into each other's minds as their natural sense impacting their social interactions. Reading someone from another species is harder for the dogs, but Burry has known me for the longest time. If there's anyone in shelter who can read me via empathy, Burry must be the best at that. The worst part is that even if he's doing that right now, I have no way of feeling that any more than a person could feel someone stare at their back. Is he judging my mental state? Is he suspicious of me? Whatever it is, this is so unfairly intrusive. It's so unfair. This is yet another thing I can't do with my I can't I can't do myself as a human. Stop that! Hmm? If you have something to say, then say it. Don't just stare at me and How long have you felt that way? Huh? I thought you were happy here, Luke. Hurry. This is hardly the time to talk about our feelings, not not now. No, Luke, this is precisely the time to talk. From what I see, it hasn't been long overdue, in fact. I will take as much time with you as I need to until you finally tell me everything that is on your mind. I shall wait no longer. Why did you never talk to me about any of that? All of the... everything. Did I really have to? Couldn't you see? You're a smart dog. You knew exactly what was going on. No, Luke, you have to tell me. If you do not speak your mind, then how could I know? And let me tell you, you tend to stay quiet an awful lot, Luke. I genuinely thought you were leading a good life here. You never complain. You were always motivated. Whenever you speak about your work, it is usually with excitement. I thought this is the right place for you, especially if we are talking about the pack. I never thought you could feel you do not belong. It is absurd. That is... Teak doesn't share your sentiment. We may try to play a game of pretend, but he sees me for who I really am. That being? Not a canine. So what? Why should that matter? Why are you so fixated on that? Hurry, don't act like I didn't already tell you. Don't let me repeat myself, please. The shouts, sparks, and howls outside become louder and sound more urgent. I hear the sounds of metal being brandished. The dogs outside are preparing for battle. This is going nowhere. I want to get out and do something, not sit here and talk. Even if the gate is closed, there still has to be something I could do. Why is he keeping me here? Luke, is this still what you want to do? Huh? I mean, staying here, in shelter. You have given hundreds of hearts a home and a chance for a new life. Even if they do not say that often, everyone here is eternally grateful to you. I am as well. But none of that holds any purpose if you yourself are not happy here. I thought that shelter was a miracle for both you and me. But if it brings you more pain than it makes you happy, if you feel trapped and suffocating here, then let us leave shelter. We stare into each other's eyes in silence. The silence gets broken with a group of howls and unity outside. I think something is charging out to meet the monsters in battle. They're that close. There we go. My mind bounces between the gravity of the situation, the cold inside my gut, and the words Burry just spoke out. I can't believe what I'm hearing right now. Whatever you decide to do, you shall always have me by your side. You'll always have an ally in me, Luke, shelter or not. You don't really mean that. You're testing me, and I don't like that. No, Luke, I'm a bad, deceitful dog, but right now I'm being honest with you. I spent my whole youth following other people's commands, and I never thought for myself. I did what I thought was expected of me. That was my whole life. I told you earlier that story from my childhood, where we stole books from the library. I said I did not want to sour the mood with the ending because it was a sad one, correct? Remember I told you about it, right? One day I got upset with my brothers. 
I admitted everything to the caretakers. I betrayed all of my brother's trust, and not for a good reason at all. Maybe I believed that that was the right thing to do, to be an obedient dog. <sighs> Everyone was punished but me, and surprisingly, my brothers never forgave me. It's not like I did not understand what I did. I did feel shame. Ever since the day of the punishment, I had that brand of shame and regret forever etched into my heart. For many, many years after that, way deep into my adulthood, I thought about that day every time I laid, my, laid in bed to sleep. I could not turn back time. With that choice, I had to find the world to be lonelier and more painful to everyone than I should have been. That's why I lost myself in the pursuit of knowledge. Anything to occupy my mind and to gain approval of the people above me. First the caretakers in our monastery, and the royal officials. Year after year, I climbed the ladder of, this, I climbed the ladder of scholarship hierarchy, and I was praised for that. I did not care what it was they wanted of me. I would simply comply. Even when they needed us to perform research on living subjects, it did not bat an eye. No, not subjects. People. Thinking living people. Many of them were our fellow canines. But that did not matter. It was expected of me, and I never even shed a single tear for any of them. Ugh. Until the day they brought in one of my monastery brothers onto the table and... Burry stutters and gulps nervously, but his expression doesn't change. I wonder why he's telling me all that now. I know his past, more or less. Some of the details seem fuzzy, but I still clearly remember the state Burry was in when we first met. Obeying other people's expectations instead of creating his own agency led him astray. When he finally realized his mistakes, it was already too late. What is he trying to tell me about recounting all that? But you already know the story. Or at the very least, you once did. Maybe you, not, maybe you do not anymore. He takes a deep breath to calm himself. Before he continues. Luke, I do not wish for you to live in regret, so following other people's expectations is not your own will. That is not the living at all. But neither will I pretend to know what is best for you. All I can do is support whatever you decide is right. Wherever you go, you have my full support. He stays silent and stares at me with patience and expectancy. It takes a moment for his words to seep into my mind. Me? Leaving shelter? No way. How could he even say something like that? It is water time. The very thought of it, it makes me feel... Huh. Well, this is interesting. Huh. What is this gonna do? Hmm. Makes me feel angry. Hmm? Luke, why are you looking at me like that? I mean, what I say, I'm not testing you, I swear. If you wish to leave and turn a new leaf, then... Are you out of your damn mind? Huh? Why are you angry at me? I'm only saying that if you feel like if you do not find any more satisfaction in... Stop, stop. Why are you doing this? What? I'm supporting you? No, you're not supporting me. Maybe you think you are, but you're wrong. I think you're not trying to test... I think you're... I know you're not trying to test or guilt trip me either. But what are you doing right now? What you're doing right now is putting all the blame on me. Like everything that is happening right now is because of my whim or something. No, of course not. Luke! Goodness me. Oh no. You're right. You're absolutely correct. That was not my intention, I swear. Listen, you told me your story just now, and I guess what you tried to tell me was follow your own path and not other people's expectations, right? But I saw a completely different moral in it. That is, don't betray your friends. You know I love shelter. I love all the dogs. Yes. Of course it would be easy to just throw it all away and go live in a cabin in the woods or whatever. But do you really think that would make me or anyone else happy? All right, y'all. I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and uh, check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Anyway, I uh, feel I'm tired. Anyway, love you all. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.